Bro, listen. Never in my life associated the word boring with baseball. We know, we know what's up. Me? Yeah. Famous? Yeah. And I'm like giddy over there smiling like, holy, I mean, we're about to win this shit. Did everyone give you crap? Give me a good like host story. You know, I'm like, I'm not picking it up. No, we both love the game. We, we talk about it every day. Can't get off baseball. Having some popcorn, you're fooling around your phone. I'd have to weigh a mine for three hours. Like, but hang on, because it's about to be a wild ride. All right. There's no human being I'd rather be talking to right now than Michael Kelly. That's a fact. <laughs> It's a fact. Thanks, man. Thanks for joining us. I appreciate it. We met at we met at Fenway briefly, um, and Michael, like we, I asked you as I asked various people why baseball isn't boring. Just it was a <laughs> test. It was a test, Michael. And you, pat, oh my goodness, you had one of the best answers. It was great. Thank you. You're welcome, man. It's my pleasure. Thanks for having me. Well, so um, obviously Michael Kelly, uh, renowned actor, and uh, I just want to first, I want to pound these things that are coming up for you, because I'm not just saying this. I, first of all, I, I'm I'm just a huge, huge admirer of all your stuff, and I'm going to get into the, I think it's the only sports movie you've done, like, I <laughs> think, right? Right? I, Before I don't want to name it. Okay. Because right. there's, I think there's two. Oh, there's two. All right. Well, I know that yeah. one is counterintuitive into to the uh, your fandom uh, because of the city that it was based in, right? <laughs> exactly. So, That's fun. <laughs> uh, but you have the Penguin coming up uh, September nineteenth, HBO. Uh, Colin Farrell and and by the way, an actor who I love also Clancy Brown, uh, oh. from Shaw. Sh- Sh- in case people don't know, I mean. Yeah. He's done a lot of great things, but forever, I mean, forever when he comes on the screen, I'm like, hey, that's the guard from Shawshank Redemption. Uh, yeah. Tough. But so good. So good. Such a great actor, man. And and they loaded this cast, man, for the Penguin. It's it's so, the, the young girl, Kristen Milioti, is unbelievable in this. She is, most of my stuff was with her or uh, Colin. And she... Blew me away, man. Just blew me away with her talent. And uh, she's she's going to, people are going to be like, everyone's going to know her after this. That's for sure. You know, here's, here's a here's a maybe potentially awkward segue to baseball, but maybe some genius. I don't know. You talk <laughs> about acting with different people. Like you mentioned Colin Farrell you acted with. Yeah. Um, you've acted with, you know, I can go down a million different people that you've acted with. I've always said this, Michael, that a major league manager, you know, one of the strengths has to be to adapt and to, you know, you, it's, it's such an eclectic, you, you work in such an eclectic medium and such an eclectic group of people, a manager in the baseball, they walk into a clubhouse. It's such an eclectic group of people, whether it come from the Dominican Republic or, you know, a college kid or whatever it is Yeah. for you as an actor, how does that relate? You know what I'm saying? Like when you have to be sure. yourself, you have to be yourself, but you also have to, I would imagine, adjust, right? A hundred percent. Yeah, you do. And uh, I, I think that's, it, it, it's certainly one of the better qualities to have as an actor is to be able to adapt because these personalities, like you said, like major league baseball players, they're very big personalities. <laughs> uh, whether not, not, not necessarily saying that they're showing it outwardly, but they are themselves and they're very confident in themselves and and some are insecure and some are, you know, but you have to be able to adapt to those different personalities and be like, okay, well, what is, what does this person need as a, uh, and it gets very personal because you are a, it's, it's like a game of tennis at times where you're back and forth and back and forth, you know, in a scene, you have to, you're listening to the other person, you're reacting to the other person And then you've got to do it when they say cut and you've got to be able to be, have some sort of relationship with that person. Even if you're playing absolute adversaries for when the camera rolls, you have to have something uh, grounding you, I guess is a good way to put it. And, but to be able to, to adapt to those different types of personalities, I imagine it would be very similar to what, you know, Snicker goes through with, with having to 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 go from an Acuna to an Olsen, uh, 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 a Marcelo Zuna, 
to to Austin Riley. These are different cats, man. You know, um, they all have one goal. Right. Same as acting. We all have one goal to make this end product that is a beautiful, shiny object for everyone to look at. Uh, in, in baseball's case, it would be a win. But to be able to, you know, the director and the manager, I imagine, are, are very similar in having to have a pretty damn tough job. <laughs> yeah, but that's the thing, right? That you land when you land with the great thing, like the penguin, or we mentioned the lioness that's coming out also oh, yeah. October, November, uh, Paramount Plus series. Which talk about a cast, or like, oh my god, holy and mackerel! How much stuff I get to do with Morgan Freeman, and it's just, you know, Shawshank. Going back to Shawshank. Glory and uh, driving Miss Daisy, like that dude is a living legend. He's God, you know. What I mean, <laughs> he's the voice of God. You know, that's him, um, and he's one of the kindest individuals, but a very unique individual. And he and I found a a very happy uh, place, uh, admiration for one another, and we're able to just hang out and talk in between. Every time they said cut, we'd either be running lines together, just going over our scene. Or just talking about life. And he is just an incredible human. He's everything that you would imagine him to be, is what he is. Could I, I, and again, a lot of this stuff, I'm I'm super privileged to be listening to you say this. A lot of this stuff, like I, or I'm just thinking as you're talking, when you sit down with a Morgan Freeman, it's like, it's sort of, and I'm going to, I'm going to, because this is baseballs and boring, I'm going to say, hey, listen, I've seen guys sit down with guys in the dugout and learn, right? I saw a Jaron Duran the other day sit down with a Fred Lynn and learn, right? Pick yep. their brain. So when you sit down with Morgan Freeman, I'm sure there's many things, but what what's something that you're like, wow, you know, that's what I'm taking away from this? Really from, from, uh, from an acting perspective, it's really more, because you can't really talk about how to be a better actor. Right. It, it, it's it's it, my my belief. And, and I differ from a lot of actors, but my belief is either you can do it or you can't. The only way to get better is to continue doing it. Mm -hmm. um, you can't take a person who's not an actor and doesn't have that thing in them. I, I know it sounds weird, but it's either like you can do it or you can't. You can. No, be you know what, Michael? It's like it's kind of like I'm going to say this. It's kind of like a writer, honestly. A, yeah. A writer. Yes. And, yeah. and I feel so bad when I see young writers in, where you want to be a writer, you want to be a writer. Like, I know how you're going to get better by writing more, by reading more, but sometimes you're just like, you just don't have it. Not going to happen. Yeah. So, so for, so for me to go back to that, Morgan Freeman is by, for, for me, it's watching him work. It's watching him do what he does. And it's trying to connect with him in those scenes in a way that is like him not my acting style, but just, okay, I see what wavelength we're working, what wavelength we're operating on. And you try to stay locked into that wavelength, not their style again, not the, right. but it's just, how do I fit into this equation? How do I work with this man? Um, so for, for, for me, it was like kind of just getting to know him. And I, I will say one of the coolest things that an, an actor, it is the coolest thing an actor has ever said to me. Um, we were doing a scene and he said, we were, we're, we butt heads. Our characters butt heads a lot, right? He's the secretary of state. I'm the deputy director of the CIA. They butt heads. Um, and he barked at me, non-scripted lines. He, he improvised something. And I went right back at him with improvised lines of my own. And afterwards, he said to me, <laughs> in one of our chats, he goes, you see there that was uh well you did that that was that was really good and i was like oh geez thanks morgan he was like no 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 hang on because and you know him very slow methodical yeah, speaking yeah, yeah, yeah. he said a lot of times when i bark at someone non-scripted lines they're just like uh, 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 because it's me <laughs> he's yeah, like yeah you hung in there and you went right back at me <clears throat> and i loved it and i was like oh morgan I can't tell you, buddy, what, what that means to me coming from you. And he's like, oh, well, no, you're, you're that good. Is, you're that, is, that is and awesome. It, but it's like, you know, it's like but that's in, that's ingrained in you, Michael. I mean, that's that's the thing that makes it so awesome, right? You don't even know 
you, it's not like you say if if this happens, if Morgan Freeman yeah, does this, no. <laughs> right? Right? You know. No. <laughs> no. Yeah, so let me ask exactly. you this. So uh, again, like segueing the sort of the baseball thing, sitting down with Morgan Freeman is to as an actor is like okay, that's probably if you could say a guy I want to pick to sit down with, that's probably on the top five. Yeah. If you could sit down with a baseball person. Mm. And say, hey, you know what? You got like a half hour in the dugout, just hanging out, just asking questions, whatever it is. Maybe it's Zane Smith. Chip I just wanted, to, I just wanted to drop a Zane Smith reference. <laughs> <laughs> I went, it is I, went I went fishing with Zane Smith once. That's why. Did you? <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. For me, it's hundred percent Chipper Jones. He is uh, the wealth of baseball knowledge that that man has. Is you. One of my favorite things to do is is hear other baseball players talk about Chipper Jones and the influence that he's had on them as a hitter, as a player, as, you know, just his ability to be like, I, I don't remember, it was a handful of days ago. I, was, I don't even remember what I was, it was, I was listening to the Braves broadcast, I guess. And one of the guys was talking about, I forget who it was, it was alumni weekend. Someone was in the dugout and they were talking about Chipper and he said he had gone up and the hitter had got a hit off of I forget. One of the greats, Roy Holiday or something. Yeah. And he got back to back hits off of him. And Chipper was like, the first time the hitter came back, he was like, Chipper was like, he's gonna he's gonna get you next time. He's gonna get you with the and he named the pitch. Yeah. Next time the guy goes up, he gets the hit off that pitch. And then the next time he came back, he was like, okay, now you did it. Like, you're not going to get a hit off him again. He did. <laughs> and then he said the next time he saw, I think it was Holiday. The next time he saw Holiday, he went, oh, for four, four, four punch. <laughs> he was like, Chipper just said, I told you, man. Like, you should, you should Holiday, but he's going to get oh, you. Oh, man. But Chipper it's told him so, what to for him. He hit it. Such a good yeah. choice. Such a good choice. I mean, like, yeah, this this is the thing is that there are some people that you say, I want to sit down with and just be around. Yeah. But when you have that combination of someone to sit down with to be around, but also like drop knowledge like that. His, it's, his knowledge is insane. It's just his and his understanding of the game, his love of the game. He still goes. I The last time I was in, I'm sorry, two games ago, I was in Atlanta. And Nick Green said, hey, man, uh, Chipper wants to say, hey, if you're if it's cool. And I was like, are you shitting me? Yeah, of course. He's like, yeah, he's a fan. I was like, oh my God. Uh yeah. So I went down to him, his seats, which were like five, six rows in front of me. And he just comes for like, hangs out for BP sometimes. He stays yeah. for like two or three innings to see everybody through the order. And that's it. He's out. But we just chatted for a few minutes and I was just like, oh man, dude. But, and he's but, like, like oh, you bro. know what's cool, Michael, is that. When, you know, like when covering people, like I always love gravitate toward genuine people. And, mm. and so, and I'm not saying like, I, I get it. Like, and you know, a lot of people want a lot of things of, of famous people, like, you know, like yourself. or yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> But it's, but when you get a genuine person like Chipper Jones or yesterday, I'm sitting up in the press box and we're talking with Dennis Eckersley, who I've known for a while. Oh, wow. Yeah. I mean. Eck is, there is nothing phony. I mean, there is every word. You're like, he's like, real? What? Real? Like, everything is like, you're, it's, it's exactly how you would want to have a conversation with any human being. Forget about an a sure. iconic baseball player. But I would, isn't that, that's, he's, that's the best. You could tell, you could tell with Eck, really, like, you watch that guy play and you see it, right? You see that, that guy. Uh, somehow you see it in some players and you don't in other players and you see shitty in other players in their attitude on the field. And it's like, you see that guy, he is a baller, a gamer and gives 1000% all the time. Always did just so much respect, so much respect. And yeah. And, and just walking down the hall, he'll be like, and this is why he was a great, really great broadcaster. And, you know, I was because he sat there and he just said, <laughs> He's the guy sitting on the couch next to you. Right. Like, that's it. <laughs> like, like when 
there was a home run. It's like, let's party. Let's go. Let's party. Let's go. <laughs> so, and I think that, you know, you and I are probably the same ilk of where baseball fans, like, that's what we appreciate, the emotion of the yeah. game. So. Yeah. That's why I love Frenchie so much, that he's that guy on the couch. Like, I, I, whenever he does broadcasts, I'm always texting with him during the broadcast because I, I love it. I love it. When he left, I was so bummed. And I, Brandon's doing a great job. They, they, they've got it locked down there. But Frenchie leaving the booth killed me because he was just always one of my favorite, favorite players, favorite everything. I just love the guy. And we went to rival high schools. In, oh, you did? Georgia, yeah, yeah. Different oh. times, obviously. But yeah, he, uh, he went to Parkview and I went to Brookwood. Okay. All right. Yeah. So. All right. <laughs> um, before we sort of, I want to get into your baseball evolution. I do like... Again, going through uh, the cast of Penguin and cast of Linus, I do want to do this exercise. You had mentioned we were comparing baseball and in, in, in acting or actors. Colin Farrell, this is maybe, if, if you don't have an answer for this, fine. Who's the baseball player? Who's, who's, who's the Colin Farrell baseball player? Which I asked this because yeah, no, it just good. seems like it would be a good one, right? Yeah, I would, I would, he's got to be in the outfield, but I don't know why. This is what, <laughs> this is what I'm coming up with. He's, he's an outfielder. Um, and I would say he, he it's funny because he's, you know, I'm going to stay with my team. And I would say he's, he's truly a mix between Ronald Acuna and Michael Harris. Uh, they both have a little pizzazz. He definitely has a little pizzazz. I'll tell you a really cool story in a second. It, it remind me ski mask um they both have a little bit of uh one one is obviously a little more fun than you know acuna is a little more flashier fun yeah, than, yeah. than players but he's in, a, he's in his own right but most importantly they're both so good at what they do they're both so consistent at what they do um and that's 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 what uh colin is he is if anything one of the most i think he's one of the most talented guys doing it right now but he's always good. He never is not good. So I, I'm going to say Michael Harris because I think Michael Harris is probably the more he's okay. more consistent. Acuna is incredible, and then he'll have a, yeah. a, a, a little slump. Like Michael Harris is sort of steady, right? I Damn like it. 300 hitter, just solid as a rock, always there, always consistently there, and that's – and 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 quite often brilliant at what he does. So let it be said, let it be done. Congratulations, Colin Farrell. You have been compared to a rookie of the year. So there you go. So if you you said you had a story, I don't want to like when you say yeah. I don't have a good Colin Farrell story, I'm not going to let you forget that. So yeah. So he uh, and, and I and I had so it was good on you. Uh, <laughs> we do the ta- we go to do the table read of Penguin, and it's a big production. Like bigger than any table read I'd ever been a part of. Really? There was probably twenty actors sitting around a giant U-shaped table, cameras all set up, big screens uh, for for the few actors who couldn't make it, who had to zoom in, and all of the production uh, executives were there from HBO. It's a big to do. The, they even parked the his purple. Um, what's that car called? It's not an Aston Martin. Maybe it was an Aston Martin. I don't know. Maserati. <clears throat> I think it's a purple Maserati in the show. Something like that. It, they parked that in the, in the stage where we're having the reading. <laughs> so it was a big to do. Colin shows up and he comes in as Colin Farrell, the big Irish accent and, uh, and talking as himself. And we're all hanging out and I'm sitting right next to him, I think, or two over, I don't know. And out of nowhere they're like okay guys we're gonna start now you know they have food after everybody it's a freaking big to do he pulls a ski mask out of his jacket a full like i'm robbing a bank ski mask with just eye holes in the mouth hole (laughs) and he puts it on his head and we start reading and he's now the penguin like he sounds exactly like him like the whole accent was ready his movements were were like him and then we finished and he took it off and he was Colin Farrell again. But it was just, I was like, wow. Okay. A balls, just <laughs> yeah. balls yeah. To, to, to do that. Uh, but B I was like, it's brilliant because sure. He could have just done the voice 
but you'd have been looking at this really handsome motherfucker that's Colin Farrell. Yeah. You know, you'd have been like, ah, it's Colin Farrell. Yeah. He left it, and he's like, oh, you'll see. Is what it was saying. You know, like, you, where, where do you, where do you see when I when I look like the guy? That like, is awesome. Here's what he's going to sound like. <laughs> that, <laughs> Incredible. That is, I mean, thank you for that. That's an awesome. Yeah, yeah. That's awesome. Really cool. Really cool. Um, all right. Well, I don't have a good segue for the, for the segue for the uh, ski mask to the baseball your baseball journey, but um, you grew up you grew up in Georgia, Braves fan. Um, what was your team like? So for my team, we're I think we're the exact same age actually. So the my team, my first team was the I want to say the seventy seven seventy eight Red Sox, like right there. Yeah. yeah. And 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 Michael, like I put this on Instagram the other yeah. day. I'm going back and forth giving Jim Rice shit about something. I'm like, if little Robbie Bradford, you know, you could know that he was going to give me right, Jim Rice shit about something. So what was your team? What was your first team? Uh, well, funny enough, Dale Murphy was my neighbor. Um, oh. So that that Braves era. He was a rookie uh, first year, and we had just moved to Atlanta. So we were new to the neighborhood. He was new to the neighborhood. He was, I don't know, 10, 10 houses down from me. Uh, and my his next door neighbor was my best friend, Craig Gobert. So I was always over at Craig Gobert's house. I didn't really, like, I'm super baseball now. I was, I knew the Atlanta Braves. And yeah. I knew Dale Murphy was this new player on the Atlanta Braves, right? And we got to go play wiffle ball and Dale was like, Hey guys, come on over. We're going to play some wiffle ball in the backyard. So Murph and I joke about this now today. Like I, now I know him and <laughs> we, 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 we laugh about it that, you know, I'm sure. I don't know how much he really remembers it, but yeah. to me, when I was a kid, I was like, That's awesome. I went home and I was like, dad, I just played wiffle ball with Dale Murphy. And he's like, where? <laughs> I was like in his backyard. He's like, come on. I was like, no. So that was my, that was my early team, but I didn't, you know, we didn't have like a, a ton of money. We weren't, and we lived 40, a solid 45 minutes from the stadium. Okay. Without traffic. So yeah. we didn't go a lot to a lot of games. We had TBS though, right? So we watched games, but um, I wasn't as into it as a kid as I was probably like college is when I really became okay. All a really right. big Atlanta Braves fan the, was there the, was there many Braves fans at coastal carolina there were not no. i mean we had a good share sure but everybody you know everybody's coming from more everywhere else we I, it's funny enough i remember that the the series against uh pittsburgh and i remember watching that in columbia south carolina i was visiting my girlfriend she lived with another girl her girlfriend's boyfriend was a big pirates fan so we watched that series together and the Sibreem slot, the famous, you know, that, oh, that, that yeah, was, I was, was going to say, congratulations. Yeah. <laughs> I was, I was in college when that happened. And, and, and so that's sort of when it really was becoming something for me. But then even post that, when I moved to New York City, you know, those, those great Glavimatic small tears, mm -hmm. uh, very tough living in New York City during that time because of the Yankees <laughs> and that whole bullshit. Um, <laughs> And funny, that's the one that Chipper Jones says. You know, you ask him to this day, they're like, oh, 14 division titles, one World Series. He was like, we only should have had one more. He's yeah. like, the only oh, time we should have won was against the Yankees. Uh, he's like, we were the better team. Every other time, we were not the better team. Interesting, but he's like, yeah. that's that's the one that kicks me in the gut because he's like, we truly were the better team that year. And that's the only one we should have won. Oh, he's man. like, you know how hard it is to win a division title? Like, yeah, the World Series is... <laughs> I mean, come on. No, well, like, look, yeah, look at all these. Look at, you know, this from, you know, the current situation, right? Good, good. You know, you win the division. Well, here comes the 84 win Arizona Diamondbacks, you know? Totally. So, totally. Yeah. And and it's so funny because I was texting with my, my, my good friend, Tim Brady, uh, who wrote the other sports movie. We can go back to that. Yeah. 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 Um, Timmy, he's a huge Phillies fan. And he said, oh, this is setting up brilliantly. I was like, leave it to us. We were up 9-1 last night in the second, and there was a rain delay, and Freed was pitching. And I was like, J this, th there's the brave season in a nutshell. You're up 9-1 in the second, and we're going to – and they're going to call this game, and it's not going to happen, <laughs> and it's not going to count for shit. And, he, and I was like, that's the brave season in a nutshell. And he's like, 
it's all setting up perfectly for you to do to us what we've done for you to you the last two years. And I was like, well, then maybe MLB will finally do something about it and realize that two weeks off is not a gift. It's a curse. <laughs> yeah. So, so it's, so you, you've kept your fandom obviously. Um, yeah. Which is, which is awesome. And, and it, it really helps when you have good teams. So congratulations yeah. <laughs> with that. And I would go, so I want to spin it forward to the current team. Um, and so I've got, I go on the Atlanta sports station every once in a while and they ask me, and it seems like they're always on the edge of just, you know, jumping off a cliff. Like they're just like, well, and, and I, this is starting like months ago. And I'm saying, dude, like you're fine. Like you're okay. You're yeah. You, 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 yeah. You have all these injuries, but you have a lot of talent. Like, holy mackerel, you have a lot of talent. You're going to be yeah. okay. And as we sit here, it's kind of feeling like it might be okay. Actually, I feel better than they're going to be okay. I don't, and I'm, I'm, I'm going to yeah. jack you up. I'm like, let's go, let's go brave, right? But <laughs> you know, I need it. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, but I don't know if you feel, I don't know. You can tell me better, like why this feel, and I know because there's success and there's injuries and everything else, but what's your vibe right now? How do you feel as a brave fan? I feel incredibly fortunate that we're even anywhere near in the mix because of, I mean, look at, look at the, pull up the roster for tonight. I'm going to guess it's like Gio's at third. Wasn't on our team a couple weeks ago. We yeah. got Loriano on right. Harris. I don't know. Is Harris playing? He was hit by a pitch as well the other day. Yeah. On the hand. Yeah. So he might not even be in center. Uh, this, this is insane. We've got, you know, who's playing second with, with Merrifield. Like this isn't our team. It's just insane that, that, and, and, and credit where credit's due. Alex Santopoulos is a genius. And uh, there, there's no, by the way, can I pause? Can I pause you right there? So Alex has come on the podcast a few times and and he's one of our things that we always have to get to the bottom of is his love for ketchup flavored potato chips. So as an actor, you have probably filmed in Canada more than a few times, right? Yes, many, so yes. be before you go on, Alex, and I've asked other GMs this, and they're, they're sort of like, oh, of course he's going to say that. What's your stance on ketchup flavored potato chips? They're really good, dude. All right, see? I'm a, I'm a barbecue, like I like a barbecue or a jalapeno yeah. chip. But I have to admit that, that the first time I saw them was on a crafty table, which is where they put all the... You can have anything. There's snacks, all different kinds of snacks on a film and TV set. But everything. And one of the drivers is like, yo, check out the ketchup potato chips. And I was like, the what? He's like, ketchup potato chips. I was like, uh, no, nah, I'm more barbecue. And he's like, why don't you try it? And I was like, all right, I'll try it. And I was like, oh, shit, it is good. Really? <laughs> Really so good. You're, you're so some, I will back some, Alex on that. They're yeah, great. you're simpatico with your GM. So congratulations. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> um, but I'm sorry I interrupted you. Like no, don't be silly. So I think it's incredible that we're still we're even in the mix with the team that is you know to lose. <laughs> we lost Sean Murphy on first day. Yeah, we lost uh, Strider and Acuna within a matter of a month or two. I mean, that's your number one and your number one, right? And the fact that they're even still number three in the wild card right now, I think they, they, they I think they're but, holding the number but, three. But, wild here, card. but here's the thing, and, and I was talking to Nick Green about this a couple of days ago. To me, Michael, is that the way that we've learned from these postseason runs is if you have three or three pitchers, right? Yep. Who you can say, get on my back, it's gonna be okay. And yep. I'm not saying that. And you got to hit that spot in early October where they're pitching well and healthy, but at least the Braves have the possibility of that, you know? Yeah, they have, and they've got the three. Look at Chris Sale is the leading NL M, M, uh, uh, Cy Young right now, yeah. right? He yeah. is arguably the best pitcher in the National League. Um, you got Schwellenbach. Who saw that king? <laughs> like, no. I mean, I did because I followed AAA as well, yeah. but I didn't see him coming that fast. Yeah. Uh, you know, and 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 uh, Lopez, who would have Lopez, guessed? and you know, yeah. like who knows, Freed, you know, he gets hot or whatever. So, and my and you our gr four. great friend Charlie Morton, put him in the mix. Let's go, dude. Old man Morton, I love him. Who's much younger than me, but I, I always joke. I call him Old Man Morton, and my my son pointed out 
several times. He's like, you you know, old man Morton is younger than you, right? And I was like, yeah, <laughs> it's a figure of speech, buddy. I love Charlie Morton. I love him. Like, it, oh, I I I remember I, talking I, to. Go ahead. Go ahead. I, I remember talking to Frenchie last year and uh, during the postseason, and we were joking, and he was like, "Yeah, man, if I'm Charlie." I'm throwing till my arm falls off this season and just being like, I'm done anyway. And then he comes back and has another season. Uh, <laughs> He'll I, probably pitch next year. <laughs> I'm going to, so we talk about, you know, I talk about sitting down with genuine people. And this is one of the very fortunate things, including yourself, is that we did a pod, I did a podcast sitting in the stands with Charlie Morton earlier this year. And it was just, and I'll send you the link to it, but it's just, yeah. It was, it was just, he, you know, he's, he's just so calm and, and so, so like, there's nothing phony about him. And he's talking about oh. pitchers injuries, about the reality of pitchers injuries, which is like one of my favorite topics. So oh. yeah. And he's, and think about this. I mean, this guy, he was very honest. He's like, you know, I've been lucky. I've been lucky. Um, but you, you're asking me to throw a, a, a pitch you know, I came to Houston. They said, start throwing this pitch, this curveball, which is, you know, my arm isn't going to hold up. You know, <laughs> I don't know. So anyway, I'm glad you mentioned Charlie Morton is my point. Yeah. Oh, I love him. I think I think the world of him. And and look, man, it, the fact that he's still doing it, like I every every outing, I'm like, oh, boy. And then you see him and that curveball comes in. You're like, God, how do you hit that? But it's not, he's not throwing 97, which I would love to talk to you about because I find that I think, I think the, 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 the velocity with which these kids are throwing, like yeah, schemes. Nope. I don't, he's not going to do it. He's not going to do it for no. four more years without having a major, major problem. So can't, I think what we've done is we're at the point where we have maxed out. We have, we have, we have gone further than what the body can tolerate. And these kids, sure, they can throw that fast. They can because they've done every They're, little thing to get there. What you but said, the body goes no. What you said were the exact words of what Tanner Houck said at the end of spring training this year. Um, the body's maxed out. I'll go to a conversation I had yesterday with Kevin Gosman about, well, yeah. and he said that. He's like, it's like a kid who's playing a game on an iPad where you, you get this score and like, maybe I can do a little bit better. Maybe I can do a little bit better. And so these kids are, they get in there, they're in the lab, they get the measurements. Oh my goodness, I threw 88, like with max effort with everything. But maybe I can do a little bit better. So let me throw even harder for 10 more pitches and then even harder for 10 more pitches. I thought that the thing from Gaussman was something that I hadn't heard, which is awesome. And, you know, I just think it's it's one of these things where everything is predicated on power. Like everything. And and to Strider, to the point of Strider, where you have you have this generation now, Michael, of guys, and Strider's sort of in this generation. This is the generation of starting an AU where they're saying, we got the machines hooked up, we, you, we better see it. And you're throwing all year round. You're not taking a break. Nope, they don't. Yeah. Yeah. So, and my I think- son, it, My so son is a is a player, a uh, damn good little player. He's a pitcher, shortstop, and he's 12. And he he stops in the winter. He's like, hmm. I want to play five for him. So he'll play his fall ball, but then he won't do any training until- after the winter uh, and just, he just, and that's his, that was his thing. We've never pushed him any way in any sport or anything. I'm, I'm glad that baseball is the one that he's very good at <laughs> because I'm, I go to every practice, every game, I sit through the whole thing cause I just love it. Um, but yeah, like you see it, man, you see some kids that are just doing so much at such a young age and you wonder, you know, I don't know. Maybe they and and then burnout. You got to worry about burnout. You got to worry yeah, not well, just injury, but just like kids are like, I don't want to do that anymore, man. No, that's just too much. You know, I don't know. Bobichet, Bobichet, um, he was telling me he's 
you know, obviously his dad was a major leaguer. Yeah. He quit to play tennis. Like he's, but he's like, I don't, you know, it's just the burnout is a very real thing. I'm, I'm super. Now I'm going to, what's your son's name? Clint. Oh, I'm going to follow him now. <laughs> Clint <go>. Kelly. <laughs> Did he, did he almost make Williamsport this year? Did he almost make Williamsport this year? 12 years old, right? Next year he'll go to Cooperstown. And oh, yeah. First first trip to Cooperstown is next summer. They'll do the All travel. Right. He plays on his town travel team, uh, which is literally the town. It's they don't They don't take from, you know, a lot of the teams around here, they take kids from like, you know, 40 minutes away on their team. And our kids are – they they made a team from the town team and they they do they do fine you know they do they do great it's a lot of fun and now he'll play on his school middle school team and uh they had um they've had a couple draftees recently uh what's his name for the Orioles came out of Fox Lane High School um Monica. Uh, Henry Davis oh Henry Davis yeah yeah Is that yeah. Orioles or Pirates 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 yeah yeah Pirates they also have a kid of the Orioles they're, they 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 have oh. a really good program, Fox Lane High School. It's really well. Cooperstown is going to be great. It's, oh, I can't wait. Rich, can't so wait. Rich Hill, who we you talk about the feeling old. So as we <laughs> yeah. said here, Rich Hill is actually he just he's getting he's back in the major leagues today as we filmed it. So Rich comes up. Rich is a good friend, and he did this thing where he just he said, "I'm taking the whole year off to coach my 12 year old," and with the idea that I'm going to Cooperstown. And wow. He, he had his showcase, Michael. He had his showcase. Uh, it was about two weeks ago. And so to, for Major League Scouts, but he said, I'm still, everyone has to understand, I am still going to Cooperstown. And yeah. and he signed wow. with the Red Sox on the second to last day in Cooperstown. He was in the barracks at Cooperstown <laughs> doing the deal. So that's fantastic. Go. Yeah. Well, that's great. Well, I don't, yeah. you've been very just with your time real quick. The two sports movies you've been in one Philadelphia based invincible, right? Yep. Yep. Okay. And the other is a, is this really cool. It's a, it's a baseball thing that my, my buddy, Tim Brady, the Phillies fan wrote, but it's called uh, all square. Okay. And the basic premise is I'm a, uh, uh, I was a, um, a baseball uh, pitcher played in the minors was destined for stardom blew out my arm and you don't really ever know whether it was that or like the circumstances home anyways he goes home he takes over his father uh harris ulan uh plays my father in it and he has a bookie business i go home i take over the bookie business in this very small town in uh, delaware uh, outside of baltimore uh real close there and he um takes over the bookie business but he's really shitty at it so the people that owe him money, he decides to just go. They they don't pay him, so he just breaks into their houses when they're at work, and he steals shit to to get to get even. Has a one night stand with I don't know if you know Pamela Adlon, fantastic yeah. actress. Yeah, yeah. I have a one night stand with her. I wake up in the morning, she's gone. She's an old fling from high school. Her son is there, and I come down in the morning, and he's like, "Hey, who are you?" I'm like, "Who who are you?" And I don't even know she's got a kid. Anyways, the kid's like, "Hey, I have a baseball game on Friday. You want to come?" And I'm like. Yeah, whatever. I'll come to your game. We have this, we form a relationship, me and the kid. I go to his games. I start seeing a lot of the people that owe me money at the games. And I get this bright idea to start taking action on the little league games. And as you can imagine, oh, really? <laughs> as you can imagine, chaos ensued. I love it. It was that. a beautiful, beautiful little indie, uh, all square. It's, you can see it on Amazon, I think. I love them. it. It's I, fun I, as I, shit. I, it's, that's a great but, thing. It's that's an so awesome. We made it for like a million bucks. I got all the House of Cards crew to come and help me make it. And it was, oh, yeah, it was beautiful, beautiful, oh, really cool. Little film. Yeah, that's awesome. All right, so that leads me to your favorite baseball movie, League of Their Own. Oh, oh, good one. I, I just yeah. absolutely like we watch it as a family. We watched it so many times. I just. I think Tom Hanks is just brilliant in it. Uh, I mean, sure, Bull Durham's great, and uh, what do you call it? Wild Thing. Um, uh, so yeah, Major, oh, League. Major League. Well, you know, we did. So I did as a quick aside. I I have a um, Hall of Fame vote, and so I like to. You know, usually people just take pictures of their Hall of Fame ballot, and say who that's who we voted for. Yeah, I'm like that's boring. 
So the first year I did it, batting stance guy, the guy who imitates batting stances. Yeah. He imitated really? Gar Rhinus. <laughs> he imitated all my guys, which I was really grateful for. And the second year I was voting for eight guys. So I said, well, eight men. Okay. Eight men out, eight men in. So eight men in. DB Sweeney agreed to dress up as shoeless Joe Jackson and walk out of a cornfield and announce. <laughs> my- awesome. So, yeah. So for a time he reprived his role as shoeless Joe Jackson. So, um, yeah. So I, anyway, uh, but, but those are, those are great picks. And another thing, you know, having talking to DB about baseball movies, he, he forget which side he took, but it, it came up. Field of Dreams is it a baseball movie? Yeah. I, do you do you feel like Field of Dreams is a baseball movie or not? I do. Yeah. I do. I think it's 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 just such a beautiful story, such a beautiful film. Um, but yeah, at its heart, right? Like that's it's baseball, man. I think and, so. That's what and, I said. And I couldn't even believe people feel- didn't think it was a baseball movie. But yeah. I read that this is a thing. It makes me feel good like a baseball game does. So <laughs> I'm going to call it a baseball movie. <laughs> hey, real quick then, you're you're on that uh you get to vote. Yeah. Why why is Dale Murphy not in the Hall of Fame? It's Well, he's he's off the ballot now, you know. But why was he not ever like I don't understand yeah. how he so, never So I didn't get a vote until three years ago. So there are guys where I think Dale Murphy falls under this and Dwight Evans is another one where if you, if you looked at Dale Murphy, if this, this generation of voters Mm -hmm. maybe had Dale Murphy and I forget when he fell off the ballot, but he might be looked at differently. In other words, like I said, like with Dwight Evans, he would be in right now. Right. I got to look up Dale Murphy's overall war, but a lot of guys now like Michael, they start with war. Like that's where the Scott Rowland's in because of war. Like that's why he's in. I'd be very curious to know Murphy's war then. Uh, Because I mean, gold glove center fielder, uh, batting champion. He didn't have a world series, right? So. Yeah. That, that didn't help. So but, let me say, I'm going to look up his war real quick. Uh, yeah, 40. Yeah, his, his war wasn't that high, 46.5. But here's another place where I start, which is I look at I look at how many times they finish in the top 10 or top 15 MVP voting, mm-hmm. because that shows a dominance in that era, right? And Dale won two. I think he won two MVPs. Yeah, at least. And I would two. imagine he finished probably top 10 a bunch of other times. Oh, God. I would say top 10, 10 times at least. Yeah, I'm just looking it up here. But uh, he was just so good for so long. And I also think that the character matters. And, like, he's one of the greatest persons to ever play the game of baseball. There is... It, you'd be hard pressed to find a better individual person. Like he's just Mormon. Like he's, he's just like it just exudes goodness. You know. Like I think that shit matters. I don't know. Should so, I would love to get so let's let's if you let's start thinking. I would love to give Dale Murphy his flowers and 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 give some. <laughs> I do. Like I I feel like yeah. guys like that. Like this is Billy Wagner. Ah, love you know, it. We he's um. Yeah, I don't just keep, but we we've every year we comes on, and I love how open he is about how much it means to him. I voted yeah. for him. I do think he's going to get in. All of this, yeah. but like sometimes we have to scream this sort of stuff from the mountaintops to make people understand, right? Right. Like just and it, because you know we're you're talking about now they're talking about steroid guys being in. It's like no, those guys should all be, in my opinion, negated. From the conversation, from everything, like it—that's—that's it, that's not what the game. That's not baseball, right? It was a part of our history in the game, but it was never the game. Like, in my opinion, every single player who did steroids did that guy in AAA who never made it because of that guy a massive disservice. Mm-hmm. And the guys who didn't do did end up doing it in AAA 
because they knew the only way they were going to get in was by cheating like the guys that were already in were doing. It's just th- those cats, that's a black stain I can't I can't erase because of the opportunities that were not given to other players. That's what been, that's what pisses me off. You, you say you're going to the Hall of Fame next year. Have you been? Before? Yeah, I have. Oh, yeah. Good. Good. I went to a wedding there once and and oh, uh nice. in the town and uh, not at the not at the Hall of Fame in the yeah. in Cooperstown. And so of course we all went and did the did the tour and everything. Awesome. But, but I haven't I haven't uh, been there since they've from what I understand, they've digitized so much of it and it's so much cooler now. So I'm, I'm excited to see. Yeah, it. well, probably- I say this like one of the highlights of my, well, maybe you know, one, definitely one of the highlights of my <laughs> professional life. Uh, they, when you're inducted, you get a private tour. And <clears> so <throat> David Ortiz invited me and another writer to go on the private tour with him. Wow. Yeah. And it was like, it was really cool. I mean, it was, wow. I mean, David, we have David Ortiz holding Babe Ruth's bat and, and and to see him, they play a 15 minute video before you take the tour, all Hall of Famers. And and I thought it was gonna be this movie theater of a million people. It was literally 10 people, and he's sitting right there. I look at him and he's getting super emotional. I'm like, Yeah, man. Yeah. So no, no, I love that guy. Love him. Yeah. Yeah. Well, well, you've been very generous with your time. I appreciate it. I could talk. Yeah, I, I, I could talk all day to you, man. I love it. Yeah. I love it. I really appreciate yeah. well, you. Thanks for having me on, man. Well, we, we def- the t-shirts are on the way and uh, especially for your son. Especially right on. Yeah, He's so. going to love it. <laughs> all right. Thanks, man. Thank you so much. Have a great day.